let's talk about Unit 8, Screw Thread Representation. In order to know how to put screw threads on a drawing, we have to understand a few things about screw threads. The screw cutting machine was invented in 1797 by Mr. Henry Maudsley. Before this, every screw thread was handmade and mated to whatever it needed to mate to. So whether there's a bolt or a machine housing, you know, whatever it is. After the screw cutting lathe, threads could be standardized, right? So everybody would be on the same page. This is one of the things that led to the concept of interchangeable parts, which is a very important part of our manufacturing economy throughout the world. Threads are essentially used for three different purposes. One, the one you're probably most familiar with, is fastening. So holding things together through tension. So this is screws, nuts, bolts, anything that keeps two or more parts together. The next use is for motion transfer. So think about the last time you used a, a vise or a, you know, a bench vise. A bench vise uses usually a square thread or an acme thread to transmit power. In machine tools, they're often ball screws that use the same concept to move heavy things with little friction. These threads have a special design that makes them extra strong and useful for that purpose. Whereas screws that fasten things don't necessarily need that, that exact same thread form, so they're going to be different. The next are pipe threads, so for fluid system joints. Now there's a whole mess of these out there. They have different designs. Some of them, dry seals, are designed to seal with an interference fit between two threads. These don't need any kind of Teflon or pipe dope. And then there's threads like the MPT joints, national pipe thread, that need Teflon or pipe dope or something between the threads. The difference is the dry seal threads are more difficult to produce and inspect because they have to keep a better tolerance to do what they're supposed to. Whereas a normal pipe thread that you get at like Home Depot can be laid, made to a less strict tolerance because you're adding that pipe dope or Teflon in there to make up the difference. Thread terms and nomenclature are defined in ASME B1.7. So this document is several dozen pages long and it goes through all of the official names for all the parts of a thread, screw, bolt, whatever. There's hundreds of definitions. We're not going to go that deep into it in this class. We're going to focus on the basics of a thread to get you familiar with it and we'll go deeper into thread science later in your studies here at Hudson Valley. So let's look at a thread. We've got a couple terms we want to get familiar with. An external thread is a thread on the outside of a shaft. So when you think of a screw or a bolt, this is going to have an external thread. An internal thread is the thread on the inside of a hole. So these are in your nuts or machine housings or what have you. The crest is the top edge or surface of a ridge. The root is the bottom or bottom land between two ridges, so the low point on a thread. The major diameter is the largest diameter of a thread, measured crest to crest across the diameter of the cylinder. On an external thread, the major diameter is the outside, so when you put calipers on it, you get the major diameter. On an internal thread, the major diameter is buried in the part so that you cannot measure it with calipers. When you measure an internal thread with calipers, you're getting the minor diameter. The minor diameter is the smallest diameter of a thread measured root to root across the diameter of the cylinder. The pitch diameter is an imaginary diameter where the width of the thread ridge is equal to the width of the groove between ridges. This is important in designing fit fits between threaded parts. The pitch diameter is imaginary, so it cannot be directly measured, right? We measure two things, find the middle, that's our pitch diameter. The pitch is the distance from one point on a screw thread to the same point on the next 
thread. American inch threads are specified by the number of threads per inch, so not pitch. Metric threads are measured by pitch. The lead is how far a thread advances when the threaded part is rotated one complete revolution. For most threads, the lead and pitch are equivalent. For something called a multiple start thread, you get more lead. So maybe a two start thread, you'll turn the, the threaded member 360 degrees and it'll move twice as far as the pitch. Let's talk about thread forms. There's many out there. The one you're going to see the most often is called the unified thread. This came from American National Threads. They're very similar. The unified thread was designed to be a little bit easier to produce and inspect. It's got a sharp V and a 60 degree included angle. Acme threads are a very strong thread form that are relatively new. Acme threads came from square threads. Square threads are the strongest thread form, but they're extremely difficult to make because the tool and the lathe has almost no relief. So Acme threads are a slightly less strong, but easier to produce version of the square thread. Buttress threads are used on toothpaste bottles, right? They're designed to be strong in one direction and not so strong in the other. Each form of thread has its own standard. ASME, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, prints these and updates them about every 10 years, although some haven't been updated in a very long time. But these are the place to go to find the exact information you need when you're producing or inspecting these. So when we put threads on a drawing, there's three ways to do it. The detailed representation, the schematic representation, and the simplified representation. The simplified representation is what we're going to use in this class. But let me talk about detailed for a second. A detailed representation is exactly what the thread would look like. They take a very long time to draw by hand and they use up a lot of computer memory to make with the computer. Because of the helix and the thread form, there's a lot of lines going on there. So if you have one of these on a drawing and you shrink the view, it's going to be almost all black. It's going to be difficult to see. These are almost never used. There are occasions if the thread is a special form or if it's very, very large on the drawing, sometimes they're drawn by hand, sometimes they're done by computer. But the recommended way to do it is with the simplified representation. The simplified representation just uses hidden lines to show where the thread would be. Now these hidden lines aren't directly dimensioned. You'll have a note indicating the type of thread, the series, all that kind of stuff. So the simplified rep is just there to let you know it's a thread. The information for the thread should come from somewhere else. Let's talk about thread characteristics. The first thing we need to know about the thread is the thread series. The thread series indicates what the standard you need to go to. So is it unified? Is it Acme? Is it buttress? Right? And then it's going to indicate whether it's coarse, fine, extra fine, or constant pitch in the case of unified threads. Unified coarse, you've seen a lot, is UNC. This is the standard thread for almost everything. Unified National Fine is UNF, Extra Fine is UNEF, and Constant Pitch is just shown as UN. Unified Constant Pitch is used for larger threads for three, six inch diameter range for the most part. There are additional unified thread series. There's UNR and UNJ which have special rounded root radii for high strength use. These were developed for aircraft service. Next is the thread class. So this involves two parts. There's the A and B, which indicate whether it's an internal or an external thread. This is something you're gonna have to memorize, 
but A stands for external thread, B stands for internal thread. The next is the class of fit, so there's one, two, or three. So these are going to be written as 2B, 2A, uh, 1A, 1B, right? So you put the number first and then whether it's internal or external. A class 1 fit is a very loose fit. It has uh, big tolerance bands. The threads will essentially never touch. Class 2 is the most common. You'll see it on almost everything. This is a normal fit. And class 3 is a tight fit. There's no allowance between the threads. So they can literally be touching each other and it will only take a piece of dirt to mess it up. If the thread has multiple starts, this has to be indicated on the thread callout as two start, three start, that kind of thing. If the thread is a left hand thread, this is indicated by abbreviating uh, left hand LH. If it's a right hand thread, which is considered normal, you don't have to put anything. So the typical way a thread is noted on a drawing is to indicate the major diameter in inches. The older way of doing it was to use a fraction. It's more common now to use decimals. The next is a number of threads per inch. The next is a thread form, so UNC, UNF, UNEF, whatever it may be, ACME, dash, then thread class. So the type of fit and then whether it's internal or external. Metric threads are shown on the drawing the same way. So we'll use simplified representation. You can't tell the difference by just looking at the view, but they're noted in a different way. First, they'll use metric for the major diameter in millimeters. Next, instead of showing the threads per inch, metric threads give the pitch. So it'll be major diameter times pitch. So a typical thread would be a M8 times 1.0. So that means it's eight millimeters is the major diameter and each thread crest is one millimeter apart. So they work a little bit differently. So the pipe threads work a little bit different. Instead of giving the major diameter, they'll give the nominal diameter as a fraction. This is a table lookup. Pipe threads don't really have things you can directly measure. So if you measure a quarter inch nominal, it's not really going to be a quarter inch. It'll be something else. Then it'll give the threads per inch, the form, so say dry seal or whatever it is, and then the pipe series symbol, so the MPTF, right?